Hey folks, what's going on? Armin Hammer here with a recap of day two of the Dubai CrossFit Championships. Let's get to it. The second day of competition at the 2018 Dubai CrossFit Championships had only one event, and that was the 4x4 run, which is a 4K run out in the dunes with a weight vest. You drop the weight vest off, and then you run that 4K back without any sort of extra load. And we saw a bunch of different factors coming into play here from the terrain that the athletes had to deal with to just the various issues like how do you stop sand from getting into your shoes. You know, we, we definitely saw some athletes rise to the occasion and absolutely crush this event. And we saw a few athletes kind of stumble when it came to trying to actually overcome some of the problems it presented. Let's start with the team version of this event. So the four by four for the teams was essentially the exact same as the individual version. We saw the athletes all had to do the same course and in order to rank them they just added together the amount of time it took for each of the athletes to do it. So the team's score was the total amount of time it took all four of the athletes to do the 4x4 event. And we didn't really see a big shakeup in the scores. And if anything, we saw the top three get closer together and move further away from the rest of the field. Now that top three is the exact same in the same order from yesterday, which is going to be Team Invictus in first place. And that would be the Lauren Fisher, Rasmus Anderson, Tommy Venus, Reagan Huckabee version of Invictus. Second place is Team Sweden, which by the way, you're in second place after two days, so I, I have to give this a shot. Here we go. Team Sweden, the four members of Team Sweden are Simon Montalia, Ma Montila, Amanda Frandon, she has Frandon in her last name, and that's like a dead giveaway. Sarah Armanius, that's kind of like Armin, so that's cool. Alexander Elibro. So congratulations to you four athletes. I promise I'm gonna be better at saying your names at some point because you guys are crushing it right now. And in third place is that super duper hyperfly team that we've all been talking about, the Cassie Lance McWhorter, Adrian Mundweiler, Lucas Esslinger, Jen Smith team. So this is really kind of showing off that your individual talents are gonna be a big part of your success as a team at this specific competition. Now I have my own feelings about the team events being very individual. I'm not a big fan of exactly how it's all panning out. I don't expect or hope that other events are gonna be taking on similar programming for their teams. So either way, I think it's cool that we're gonna be seeing some different flavors, but I'm not a big fan of the fact that a lot of these individuals are just being tested on their individual capacity here as opposed to some sort of teamwork. On the women's side, we did see a little bit of a shakeup, but not much on the top end. Sam Briggs is still dominating. After three events, she's only taken second place in all three events, and so she's in first place by a bit of a cushion. Right behind her is Jamie Green, who did really well on this event, but let's go ahead and talk about Michaela Norman, who was able to win the 4x4 event. She paced along with Sam Briggs for most of the start and then was able to just put a huge gap between herself and Sam after she took that weight vest off, which is really impressive. I mean, she actually finished faster than any of the men did in this event. So. The trend continues. Sam Briggs and now Michaela Norman, congratulations. You are just starting to embarrass some of these males when it comes to these longer, more painful endurance events. That is really, really awesome to see. A couple other highlight performances on the women's side. Sarah Signazotter bounced back from a disappointing finish in the middle of the pack on event two to a top 10 finish for event three for that four by four, which is you know really good for her. She's, she was practicing a lot of endurance stuff going into the games and really wasn't able to flex it because of her injuries at the games. But now, you know, that's really starting to pay off. Bethany Shadburn has been very consistent across all the events, placing the top 10 and really sort of coming into her own, especially I think considering what events are coming up over the next couple days, I'm very excited to see how she's addressed some of her weaknesses. Laura Horvath, has been really knocked down the leaderboard a bit after event three. She was just fine for event one and two, but the longer distance run, the weight vest, none of it really played to her uh, her favor right now. I think she's really kind of having an issue with the off-season format uh, a timing of this event for her, um, but her fitness is still clearly there. I just think it takes a little bit of time to get into this like capacity, aerobic capacity, endurance world that she may have been 
kind of not really being able to put in that time because of all of her travel over the past month or so, as well as just the, the part of the year that she's in, in in her training cycle. She placed 25th in this workout and actually came into the finish barefoot, which was a strange but really funny experience to see uh, an athlete come in just having completely abandoned their their shoes at some point in the course. So hopefully she's okay. They're going to be having uh, more traditional CrossFitty stuff going on over the next couple days, and I think those are going to play into her strengths. Um, I I don't think that this is like an absolute death knell for her ability to compete for a podium spot or even win this thing, but it it definitely puts a damper on on the parade for her because a, a, a bottom third finish in this pack is gonna be really difficult to make up because of how good everyone here is and how small the field is. Where the women's division is starting to spread out over the top six or seven athletes, the men's division is doing the exact opposite. In fact, over the six athletes in the top, there are only 12 points between first place and sixth place. So this is still a very, very tight race. And in first place right now is Frances Willie George, who's been really impressive, very consistent across all three events, and really kind of putting himself into a position to capitalize on some of the events that are coming up. Remember, he won one of the events at the 2018 CrossFit Games, uh, a snatch and bar muscle up couplet, and I think that is the exact type of thing that he's going to have to lean on, that combination of sort of high school gymnastics and grunt work with the weightlifting to you know push through some of the events upcoming in the next couple days. Right behind Willie George in second place is BKG, Bjorven Carl Gunnarsson. He has been really, really good over the past few events, and and he's actually been finishing ahead of a lot of really top tier athletes. Just getting a couple points here, getting a couple points there, and that's exactly how he's cemented his spot in second place. Again, he's been working a lot on his strength. We're gonna see the barbell become a little bit of a factor over the next couple days, and I'm excited to see BKG really throw down, especially considering in third place right behind him is Matthew Fraser, who is really obviously the favorite to win this thing. He has not locked it up, However, we are only three events into a 10 event weekend. So there's seven events still. There's a couple things over the next couple days, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, that are really gonna play in his favor. So I'm, I'm interested to see just exactly where the gaming comes in for athletes like Willie George, BKG, or Travis Mayer, who's in fourth right behind Matt Fraser, where they can kind of make up a few points here and there over Fraser in order to keep Fraser in third or second as one of them kind of pops up and takes over that top spot. But again, there's a very tight race on the men's side between the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place athletes. I mean, these are all men who can come in and make a shot at that podium over the next couple days. So what can we expect coming up tomorrow? So day three of the Dubai CrossFit Championship is going to be packed full of really exciting events, three of them specifically. The first event that's gonna take place is going to be a one rep max snatch event. So right off the top of my head, Laura Horvath, Matthew Fraser, they're gonna be people who are going to really sort of exceed expectations here place themselves in top positions, earn some points to get themselves into those podium spots and for uh, Matt Fraser back into that first place spot. And we're probably going to see an athlete like Sam Briggs maybe slide down the leaderboard a little bit. She's not known for her top end strength, but this is going to be something that maybe she's going to have to worry about damage control going into. As far as the team goes when it comes to the snatch event, I, I suspect Invictus and Invictus X are going to be really, really good at this. They're, they're both very strong teams, teams that have you know real workhorses on them. Invictus X has Sam Dancer. I mean, he can probably snatch like 700 pounds or something on his own, right? So he's good to go. The second event that we're gonna see on day three of the DCC is called Under Pressure. And it's a combination of strongman movements and gymnastics work, which is really interesting. I think there's there's gonna be some, some really fascinating effects that these combinations have. So they're gonna do a yoke walk into hand, handstand pushups on the parallel, 
And after they're done with both of those, they're gonna do a couplet of box jump overs and ring muscle ups. And once they're done with those, they're gonna do like three rounds of that. They're gonna do the yoke walk again. So we're seeing this like under, uh, under stress, under weight, and then from there moving on to some more of these like classic gymnasty couplets, you know, really burning, really high power output type stuff, and then back under the weight. And I think we're gonna see athletes like BKG, Willie George, Matt Fraser do well. I mean, that's not really the most controversial pick of all of them, right? And on top of that, I think on the women's side, this is the type of thing that Sam Briggs is going to excel at. This is the type of thing that Bethany Shadburn is really going to show up for and do well at. These are the, the events that really kind of are the bread and butter of the classic CrossFitters competitive sphere. The team version of Under Pressure is yet another format that is brand new to team competitions, but not exactly something that I think is a good idea. And that is the teams are going to pick one male athlete who will do the workout as written, just like the individuals are, and that is gonna be the team score. Again, I'm not a big fan of this idea of separating the teams out into just their individual parts. When you have a team of four, really what you want to do is test the team as a whole. I think the individual testing is fine, but not really something you want to, you know, hang your hat on when it comes to picking a team that's going to go into the CrossFit Games. The final event we're going to be seeing tomorrow is called Acid Bath, and it is appropriately named because it is a high power output triplet of monostructural movements. 500 meter ski erg, 500 meter row, 1K bike. And this is a combination that is going to really put some burn onto these athletes. I mean, after the run today, after all of the snatching, after all of the carrying of the yoke, they're gonna be asked to grab onto a rower, they're gonna be asked to get onto a bike erg and really put out some major power output. And this is a type of event that, you know, if you don't go there on these specific machines, you're not necessarily gonna have the ability to find that place. And I think athletes who are well known for spending time under this sort of like the duress, I guess is a good way of describing it, athletes like Sam Briggs, that really inspired decision making here, right? Matt Fraser, really rolling the dice with those picks. These guys are, are athletes that we know spend a lot of time on these monostructural events, doing lots of interval work. In fact, Fraser recently posted a, a uh, an Instagram picture of a workout that he did that was just simply 20 calorie sprints on an assault bike and repeating every five minutes. So this guy spends time on that high end of that power output, as do a lot of these athletes. Travis Mayer is gonna do well here. We're gonna see some athletes really show up, and I think the, the fallout from this being the final event on this day three of competition is gonna be the most interesting part of it because we have to see where these athletes are recovering to when it comes to entering that final day of competition, which is definitely gonna be something to watch when it comes to that last final day four of DCC. So there you have it folks, that is a recap of day two of the Dubai CrossFit Championships, the four x four event, as well as a look forward to day three with three more events. Here's what's even crazier, the last day of competition has four scored events. So we're essentially not even halfway through the Dubai CrossFit Championships and we already have a pretty exciting and tight race on every division. So I'm really pumped to see exactly what happens. And remember, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. And that is what I am here for. I will be back tomorrow with a recap of the first huge day of competition of the Dubai CrossFit Championships, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. I'll see you guys then.